Welcome back to the channel. Over the past several videos, we've gone over the fundamentals of analytical chemistry and how we can use Python to do many of the traditional statistics like t-test, ANOVA, moving into data visualization. And now let's consider the q-test. The q-test is a measure of sort of the gross error of a measurement. It's probably best to show visually to gain some intuition about what it's actually doing. And so let's say we have five measurements here that come from this values list and they could represent five different weighings of, of, of various materials. However, these represent individual data points. And we want to determine if this data point out here is an outlier, if this sample point here is an outlier. And so the Q test is a measure of the gross error of these data points. And the way it's computed is essentially computing the absolute value of the difference between this point and its nearest neighbor divided by the range of the overall spread of the data. And so in this video, I want to demonstrate how you can create a function to calculate the Q-test, and then we'll apply this to real data as we continue to track through this fundamental series. Let's get started. So let's make a function called get Q vowels. And all we want to pass into it is a list of values. And so this list of values can represent different weighings. It can represent some other analytical measurement, but these represent individual data points. And so for this key value, we want to make sure that our list of measurements is sorted. That way we can easily access the highest amount and then separate it from the second largest amount. So one way to do that is to just create another variable called sorted list. And we'll just pass in the argument list of vowels to sort it. And so now this will sort our list of values and make the rest of the calculation relatively straightforward. So to compute the absolute value of the difference between this highest point and the neighbor, we simply use the numpy apps method and we will subtract this value from this potential outlier. And so in our shorter list, we'll just pass in the index value for the last value, which is negative one. It's better to do it this way because if our measurement value changes, then this value changes. But if we're always wanting to measure the highest value, this is a way to do it fairly robustly. And from that, we want to separate the second highest value from sorted list. And so we'll just pass in negative two. So negative one is always the last value. Negative two is always the second from the last value. And we have our parentheses and the denominator, we're going to divide by the range or the spread of the data. So that would be the lowest value subtracted from the highest value. And so to do that, we will divide by max of sorted list, subtracted from min of sorted list. And, and we will now make sure all of our parentheses are correct and then return Q. And so let's see if you got this right. Q vowels. And let's pass in our test list of vowels. And now you see we have our Q value. And so the way this works is similar to T test, where we will take this Q value and compare it against a table of critical values. And so here I have a link that'll go to a table. So here you can see we have our Dixon Q test and these are the critical values. And so when we have five samples at the 95% confidence interval, our critical value is seven is 0 0.710. So let's just make a variable called Q crit and let's save this value as Q. And essentially what we want to do next is Q crit equals 0 0.710. And we want to evaluate if Q is greater than Q crit. In this case, it is not. And so we would say that this value should remain in the data set. It's not so far off that it's considered an outlier by this test. And so now the nice thing is that we can quickly take this approach and apply that to real analytical data. At the top of this notebook, we've been looking through this soil fertility data set. And so I want to show you how we can take these real analytical measures and that into this framework we've just developed. So let's take DF and let's choose um, okay, let's use the CEC column, this, this measure of conductivity. 
and let's just look at 15 samples so 15 arbitrary samples and let's set the random state to 500 we're really going for 500 subscribers and let's return values and so now you see we have a list of values randomly sampled from this conductivity column and let's call this vowels here I want to pass that into our plot vowels method so we can see what it looks like and gain some idea of the data and you can see that most of our data is probably found in the 60 to 85 range and we're going to look at this highest point around 140 and see if this is considered an outlier based on this Q test so next we run get Q vowels and we'll pass in vowels and you see that we also in this as part of this function know we have 15 measurements in this data set we also know because we returned 15 in our sample but it's good to know and we have a Q value of 0.25 so that is now Q we will determine if that is greater than the critical value so in this case the, the critical value for 15 samples at the 95% confidence interval is 0 0.384 and so let's set our critical value Q crit 15 equals 0 0.384 we will determine is this greater than Q crit 15 and we see that that is false now if we do have an outlier let's say we have an extra point here let's say we have a point at 80 and we run this and we, we sort of really drive an outlier we now have six samples and the critical value for six samples is six to five you now see that when we have when we add this point that's significantly higher than the rest of the measurements we now return true i'll challenge you to extend this method to accept a critical value and maybe actually just output the the output of this test if there's a critical value if you want to see me solve this in the next video um, comment on the video below if you enjoyed this like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace